Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. Many people think of aerospace engineering as mainly having to do with flight. And while it's true that it requires a number of complex systems in order for massive commercial and military aircraft to fly safely, most of the risk happens during takeoff and landing. Indeed, these planes can weigh hundreds of thousands of pounds and carry hundreds of thousands more passengers and cargo. It takes innovative braking systems to bring them to a safe stop, especially after a hard landing. The term hard landing refers to an abrupt and forceful touchdown on the runway during the landing. It occurs when the aircraft descends and makes contact with the runway with a higher rate of descent than what is considered normal or safe. This can result in a sudden jolt or impact, which can be felt by the passengers and crew on board. It can also hinder the plane from coming to a complete and safe stop. For this reason, major aircraft manufacturers like Boeing and Airbus place a lot of emphasis on brake testing, as evidenced by a full-scale procedure known as a maximum energy braking test. Whenever a plane is heavy and traveling at high speeds, its brake system is typically torque limited. This means the ability to stop is restricted by the maximum pressure applied to the brake discs. For Airbus engineers, the goal is to allow for a slight slippage of the wheels so that the brakes don't lock up and cause a skid. The maximum energy braking test starts with a long taxi, during which the brakes are applied several times. This raises the temperature of the braking systems above 200 degrees Fahrenheit. At this point, the aircraft accelerates with maximum thrust. Once the test pilots reach the planned speed, they idle the engines and apply full brakes without reversing thrust. The brakes are applied until the aircraft comes to a complete stop, at which point the brakes are typically on fire. Fortunately, the tires feature heat-sensitive triggers that cause them to deflate so they don't explode from the heat. Ground crews are always standing by to put out the fires, but in order to ensure the simulation is as accurate as possible, they wait five minutes before stepping in to intervene. This time represents the rough estimate for airport crash tenders to respond to an incident or crash. Crash tenders, also known as aircraft rescue and firefighting vehicles, are specialized trucks equipped to handle a wide range of emergency situations. They often boast powerful firefighting equipment, including high-capacity water cannons, foam systems, and dry chemical agents to extinguish fires that may occur on an aircraft during or after a crash landing. Though it is not uncommon for regular fire trucks to intervene in incidents at airports, 
crash tenders are already on site, allowing them to provide an extremely rapid response. Alongside Airbus, Boeing is one of the world's top producers of commercial and military aircraft. Founded in 1916, the company is behind some of the most iconic planes in history, including the famous 747 airliner. In 2011, the company introduced its 787 Dreamliner, a new passenger aircraft boasting advanced materials and technologies for improved fuel efficiency and passenger comfort. But before the 787 could go to market, Boeing ran it through a battery of tests, including a similar braking test to the one used by Airbus. In this scenario, the plane was loaded to its maximum takeoff weight and sent down the runway at its top speed. To add an additional variable to the test, Boeing's team equipped the new plane with brakes that are 99% worn. By simulating the absolute worst case scenario, Engineers can get an idea of how the aircraft will perform in less dire situations. Fortunately, the 787, its braking system, and ground crews all exceeded expectations. Though brakes are extremely important to how an aircraft performs on the ground, the landing gear itself is just as crucial. Over the years, the typical commercial and military landing gear has evolved exponentially, going from simple designs to highly complex, advanced systems. These improvements contribute to safer, more efficient, and more comfortable landings and takeoffs. For instance, most modern landing gear systems incorporate state-of-the-art shock absorption and dampening technologies, which help dissipate the energy generated during landing. This can drastically reduce the impact forces of hard landings and even prevent incidents on the ground. Other modern systems also incorporate integrated sensors that provide real-time data to pilots and maintenance crews. This includes information on the condition of the landing gear components tire pressure and temperature, allowing for proactive maintenance and reduced failure risk. Embraer is a Brazilian aerospace company currently recognized as one of the leading manufacturers of commercial, executive, and military aircraft. For instance, the company's Phnom family of planes is mainly used as private jets or commercial flights. Every 10 years or 12,000 flight cycles, the landing gear from these various planes is sent to Embraer for a comprehensive overhaul. This takes place at the Embraer Equipment Division, or ELEB, in Brazil. The process begins with a documented check inspection of each component. From there, 
the landing gear is disassembled into roughly 600 individual parts. At this point, any sacrificial elements, like bushings, are removed, as is any paint. Each part is then sent into a non-destructive inspection system, in which they are covered in dye and examined for cracks and weaknesses with a black light. From here, any reusable parts are carefully repaired or restored to a like new condition. Any components that need to be replaced will be incorporated during the reassembly process. One of the ways that companies are making longer lasting landing gear systems is through the use of computer numerical control or CNC machines. These automated manufacturing systems use computer programming to control the movement and operation of tools and machinery, increasing accuracy, repeatability, and efficiency in production. With CNC, even smaller aerospace companies can create far more accurate landing gear designs and components reducing the undesired friction that can wear down components over time. After the brakes and landing gear, the runway is the third critical factor in how an aircraft performs on the ground. Modern runways are typically made of asphalt, concrete, or a mix of the two. This helps ensure they can handle the constant air traffic without becoming damaged. All military and commercial airports have specialized teams dedicated to cleaning and upkeep of the runways. This includes regularly inspecting and cleaning them with high-pressure hoses. In fact, some airports remove up to 6,000 pounds of rubber from airplane tires each year. These teams are also tasked with ensuring that the runway markings are properly maintained. These high visibility markings are integral to the safe operation of the airfield and must be repainted the moment they begin to fade. And since most airfields operate 24 hours a day, they also require high quality lighting to ensure pilots and ground crews have proper visibility. In the event this lighting fails, the airport must shut down entirely, sometimes for days at a time. This is why most fields also carry reliable backup lighting that can be used in case of an emergency. Speaking of emergencies, many airports worldwide have begun adopting a new safety system designed to save lives even if the brakes, landing gear, and runway fail. It's called the EMAS, or Engineered Materials Arresting System. It essentially consists of a series of specially designed, crushable blocks made from lightweight cellular cement material. These blocks are engineered to safely and progressively crush under the weight of an aircraft's landing gear, 
creating a frictional force that decelerates and stops the aircraft. This deceleration is fast enough to kill the forward kinetic energy of the plane, but not so fast as to risk the aircraft or the passengers. And because the thousands of cement blocks are all independent of one another, only those damaged during the emergency stop need to be replaced. This reduces costs for the airport while simultaneously maximizing safety. Thanks to these benefits, EMAS systems will soon become the standard at airports of all sizes around the world. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.